Can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and what kind of artwork you do? Um, my name is Kathleen Vance. I am a member of the Thon Autumn Nation. Um, I'm also San Carlos Apache and I live in Sells, Arizona, but I'm registered under Chukut Cook District, Cook Community, and my medium is uh, traditional pottery. And how long have you been creating art? I've uh, actually learned how to uh, gather and process traditional clays um, about 18 years ago. And I would say the last um, 12 years, I've uh, started again working with clay, but the last six years is I've been working weekly and daily with clay. Mm. What got you started again? Um, I met my uh, current mentor, um, Ruben Naranjo Jr., and he, um, um, I guess, more or less revived that, um, the um, clay, uh, I mean, just the processing, because before that, my mentor passed away, so, um, so he kind of just came into that puzzle and helped me. Do you want to talk a little bit about these people who have had big impacts on your work? Yeah, I can. Um, Alicia uh, Bustamante, she was an elder from the village of Sagogoksik, and um, she was my, my first mentor. And uh, she actually um, taught me how to gather and process clay because at that time my daughter was um, uh, coming of age and instead of buying a, a pot to use for a ceremony, we decided, her aunt and I and, and uh, Sissy also decided that we would um, actually have somebody teach us to make pottery and so um, that's how she came into um, my life. And um, I learned a lot from her, um, but the main thing that really, really stood out is that um, once I knew how to make pottery, the traditional um, pots, that I had to pass that on to someone. Um, and then uh, there was a lot of questions I still had regarding firing because we never done that process with her. Um, so after she passed away, I, I stopped um, working with Clay for, for a year. And then um, uh, Ruben came into the picture and he just fit right in there and we became friends. And so we've been working, uh, I've been working with Ruben for the past 12 years. Um, so he's my current mentor, and um, I'm really glad he came. How has he impacted your work? Um, in the beginning, my thing was to just create uh, water pots and cooking vessels. But with his knowledge of ceramics, and um, he's, he's taught me and, and told me several times that I need to step out of my comfort zone and to learn more and as much as I can because someday I'm going to be a teacher and I'm going to need that experience. Mm -hmm. So for me now, it's not just about um, making the vessels to cook with. I've also started doing effigy pots and um, miniatures and whistles. Have you had experience mentoring others and has that been meaningful and, ha and has it impacted your work at all? Um, I've had uh, individuals who've come and um, asked me to teach them about the, um, what, I, what I know. Um, I've had uh, several students, uh, classrooms, um, and a couple of communities that have asked. And I've shared what I've, I've learned, um, but to see them um, work with traditional clay versus um, manufactured clay. There's a difference in the, in the smell of the clay and uh, it's really exciting when they um, catch on 
and create pieces. And for me, I've seen a couple of times, especially in uh, like the, the children's, their, when their eyes really sparkle when they uh, create a whistle and then they blow into the whistle and it makes a sound, it's just, it's really satisfying. I love it. So do you consider yourself an artist, a craftswoman, or a native artist? And um, is there a difference in how you think about your work using those different terms? I've never really thought about that, um, but since it's a question now, I'm going to have to say that I consider myself a traditional utilitarian potter, only because when you um, label someone as an artist or a craftsman or native artist, you put them on this pedestal and then um, for me, it makes it's like a, it makes me feel like I like I'd have to create beautiful works of art every time. And with traditional clay, that's not the case because you can never um, rely on your piece until after the firing. So some are, some are going to come out and some aren't, and I, I don't want to disappoint anybody, so I'll, I'll just say I'm a traditional art, um, utilitarian potter. Okay, and your effigies fit under that? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so what do you hope to accomplish through your artwork, and what, or what message do you want to present through your pottery? I... Um, I want to stay with the vision that um, I've been giving, given a gift um, of this pottery, the traditional clays, and I've always thought about how in the past the generations before have always had a water pot sitting under the Ramada in their homes or at their at their home sites. And it was always a welcoming for anyone who came to visit. So um, I'd like to see more of that. Um, but it's not only the traditional clays. It, it has to do with um, our foundation and connections uh, with family because at that time or those times when uh, people would come, well, cooking was done so that way um, when they left, um, when the visitors left, you know, they were fed and uh, stories were told under the Ramada, near the water pots, um, laughing, even crying, children playing and stuff. And so it has to do with, um, I guess, rebuilding our families and our connection to um, nature and uh, so that's, it's, it's a bigger picture than just the pottery. So what are your future plans involving making pottery? Um, I think that I, I mean, I don't think, I know. My daughter asked me the other day whether or not I was ever going to stop making pottery. And I told her, um, no. There's never going to be a time now. It's it's become a part of me, and I don't ever see myself as not creating or making pottery. Um, so I plan to um, keep uh, moving forward and learning, because there's never going to be a time where I know everything there is about pottery, and so it's going to be a long journey, and I, and um, I'm ready. <laughs>